Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about something strange. Yes, in Tesla and even in most cars nowadays, there's a thing called a clock spring. It's not in the clock, it has nothing to do with time, but I'm going to go into one of these little parts that everyone takes for granted because they're in every car. There's nothing really unique to Tesla on this. Um, what we have here is the steering wheel controls basically so this mounts behind the steering wheel on the stock has the shifter and the turn signals um, also the steering shaft passes through here and this is keyed and turns several things one is this thing through a, there's a flexible coupling here that allows some eccentricity um, in the two shafts but that engages this and this has a nylon gear that spins two other gears. You can kind of see them there. And inside, if you look at these gears, there's um, they're two different diameters slightly, and they have magnets in them. The magnets are sensed by the circuit board, <clears throat> which sits in here on top of this. And there's two ICs here. These are dual Hall effect ICs, and they sense the position of these magnets. And basically, by the the fact that these turn at slightly different ratios, the Hall effect sensors can accurately position this um, over multiple turns, so more than 360 degrees, and tell the car where the steering wheel is. And that's used for autopilot. Uh, canceling the turn signals, which on uh, uh, older cars was done mechanically, but this is done electronically. So the computer knows where you're turning the steering wheel very accurately um, when, when you do it. <clears throat> this whole assembly is pretty complicated. You've got um, two stock modules. I didn't take this one out, but it's pretty much identical to this one. <clears throat> Inside is a little circuit board that's connected to the main board by a ribbon. Ribbons are here. <clears throat> and there's also a little ribbon that runs off that secondary board up to the button and the end of the stalk. But basically, if you look on the back of this board, there are gold-plated contact areas here that these little sliders um, slide over. So that's me doing the high beams. And then this one would be the turn signal. So little brushes that slide up and down. These things have a really nice feel, uh, a mechanical detent in there. But really, that's about it. Um, <clears throat> all the signals are taken to the circuit board where there's a NEC, uh, I guess it's Renaissance now, V850, 32-bit microcontroller um, that's connected to CAN, some power supply stuff. This goes out to the car harness. These are the two ribbons from each of the stalks. And then these connectors here, now we're getting to the real point of this video. This is where the steering wheel sits, and there's two connectors here. One's for the airbag assembly, and the other one is for the steering wheel module, which I'll get to in a minute. But underneath here, this thing is also coupled to um, this, uh, this, I guess, rotating spline adapter, so it turns with the wheel. If you look at this, you see four ribbons in here, and as this thing turns, these ribbons smoothly glide over many turns, like many more turns than the Tesla wheel will turn with two turns locked lock. That's about the end of it, and it goes back the other way, and stops there. These ribbons are high flex, uh, like Kapton style ribbons with conductors in them, and they're terminating these pins that engage the connectors in the wheel and then you know on the back these connectors those are for the airbag which leave directly and then these connectors can carry the steering wheel control information which goes to the NEC processor. This is what's called a clock spring. Um, back in the early days of cars when the only thing you had on the steering wheel was a horn they would typically have a slip ring which would be a small circle of brass with a brush rubbing it to electrically conduct the horn signal. Nowadays we have a lot more controls on the steering wheel and the airbags. The airbags have 
two stages, so two squibs, and then a deflator squib, so three squibs, and that's why there's six connections here. And the you can't trust those to a slip ring. If the slip ring was dirty or whatever, couldn't carry the current, they wanted to make sure it was wired. So basically they have a continuous wire that goes all the way from the airbag out to this connector and then towards the restraint control module that fires the airbags. But that's how it's done. Um, and there's a lot of interesting features in here, like there's this little tab here which detects um, whether this is installed in the wheel or not. If it's not, it locks this thing so you won't get this thing spun one way or the other. Obviously, if you put it on and it was spun off center all the way and then tried to turn it to the left, it would rip the ribbons. So it's very important that if you remove this from the car, that the wheel be centered before you do. And then when you pull it off, that'll lock it in the center. And they have some alignment. It's really hard to see here. The little um, moldings on the plastic that tell you, make sure it's centered before you remove it. And I guess there's a window here so you can see the position. Um, very complicated mechanism. Um, I mean, it looks simple, but there's lots and lots of care put into these. Like there's, uh, looks like no less than eight pieces of injection molding in this alone. I might have missed a few. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, and these gears, to make sure this is real accurate, there's a preload spring on here that pushes this nylon gear to mesh with this so there's no slop. So the tiniest movement affects these magnets. Really cool engineering here. That's the cover for that. We talked about that, we talked about that. It's the overall cover. This is an, the little slave module which will be found up in the steering wheel, which interfaces the steering wheel controls, which on the Tesla are the two scroll wheels. Encodes it as LIN and then sends it through the clock spring to this one, which puts it on the CAN bus. Um, there's not really much there. The steering wheel controls just have three buttons on each side and, and a little infrared optical encoder to control to sense as you spin the wheel up and down. And they also there's also some LEDs in there that light up. This drives the LEDs. There's a little uh, looks like a low side driver that turns on the LEDs. Uh, the can tran or the LIN transceiver and then just a connector. I didn't put the wheel in here because it takes up a lot of space. But yeah, this is one of many thousands of parts you would find in a Tesla or any other modern automobile these days, um, which gives you appreciation for how hard it is to make a car. Because all this stuff is, well, you can't say it's needed, but is commonplace and someone has to engineer all this. I don't know if, my guess is that this wasn't engineered by Tesla despite having Tesla marks all over it because it's kind of uncommon for Tesla to use a you know Japanese uh, V850 processor I haven't seen them do that in anything else so I bet you this is a, an auxiliary supplier that's good at this kind of thing yeah I guess the new appreciation for small details the spring uh, goes in here and controls this lock mechanism that's all it does well, that's all I have for you today. Um, let me know if you want to see any other parts, and I have some other stuff coming up soon that's going to be really exciting. I'm going to try to do two videos a week if I can um, and get caught up. So yeah, let me know if you have any requests, and yeah, like the video if you like it, and subscribe. Uh, I'll be able to keep making more videos if uh, the subscriber count goes up. That's it. Everyone have a good evening.